Hey guys, it's Kelsey and back with another scrapbooking process video and today we have a mood board to play with. So this is a color scheme from the Scraptacular Cropping Club. This was their challenge for this week was to use this as our inspiration and I haven't done a mood board in a while so I was really excited to see this. Uh, really beautiful colors. We got blue, uh, kind of a minty aqua, beige, medium brown, and a chocolate brown. And then we have this beautiful little photo that incorporates all of that with the sky and the uh, dandelion. So I just figured I'd done in the past how to use a mood board and how I go about taking my mood board and going to my stash and pulling in all the projects. So I have a process video that goes really in depth with that. I'll try to remember to link it in uh, my bio if that's interesting to you. Um, remind me if I forget. <laughs> um, but the first thing, I, I kind of had this photo to scrapbook next anyways. This was Billy when he was three months old, almost four months old. And we went to Stone Mountain, which is in Georgia, um, a couple hours away from us. And you can take a tram, you can hike to the top or you can take one of the uh, carts up to the top. So since we had Billy and he was so little, we just did that, but it's really cool. It's this big giant boulder of a mountain. <laughs> it's not a big mountain itself, but it just looks like a big boulder. And um, it's pretty famous in Georgia. It has a carving on the front of it of, um, I really should honestly know who the people are in the carving, but you know, people on horses, <laughs> I'm sure of historic significance. Um, but yeah, so this is where we are. This is, uh, has all the colors from my mood board in it already. So that's why I decided to start with. And I just started going through my stash to see, to find, I really wanted to find one paper that really screamed this mood board. And then from there, I could pull in some other complimentary papers that are also within the mood board. But as I was going through all my stash, my mom had given me this one and I was saving it for <laughs> a really cool layout. And it is this wood grain and it literally has every single color from the mood board in it. So it's got the blue, the minty aqua, the beige, the medium brown, the dark brown. And I just thought it was really cool because it's got this gold foiling on it, which, you know, I was just waiting for a good layout to use it on and I feel like this is the best one. <laughs> so I kind of feel like already I have the colors of the mood board. Um, now I just need to figure out some other pa papers and stuff that are within this color scheme that I can pull in for layering and stuff. Um, but I was already really excited when I saw this paper. <laughs> so um, I do have some scraps of this lighter wood grain that has this heart print on it. So I thought that could be good for layering. Uh, very much that beigey color. And I kind of thought the little white hearts were reminiscent of the dandelion, so I liked that. Um, there's a couple textured pieces. These are also from my mom. Um, I have a 12 by 12 of this corrugated cardboard, which I think is really cool. Uh, and then I have a 12 by 12 of this uh, beigey uh, burlap. I kind of don't want to cut into these because I'm already using this really cool 12 by 12, but I thought both of these would be cool options for layering if I needed them. So I just went ahead and pulled them. Um, if you do watch my how to use a mood board video, I'm very much like if it looks like the mood board, go ahead and pull it so you have it. <laughs> Cause you wanna start with all the supplies looking like your mood board and then just use what you want from there. But at least you kind of have what you need. Um, so I thought all of these were good layering options. Um, and then for some added texture, there's a lot of texture going on this page, which I really like. <laughs> but next to me, I also had things like these brown paper bags, chipboard. I thought any of these could be used in layers for some texture. So I also have these next to me just in case. But I have been waiting to use this cut file from Redefine Creative for forever like I've held on to it for years until I had a mountain uh, layout I could use it on and I'm so excited because this is the one <laughs> so I have this cut files from redefine creative and I just was like boom that's my layout <laughs> so what I'm thinking is I will have the cut file over the 12 by 12 with my photo around here with some really cool layers uh, and then maybe you know a cluster or the title or something on the opposite side if the photo is down here. But like right away, I was like, oh my gosh, I love it, done. <laughs> um, so I was kind of thinking the cut file on top of the wood green with the gold foil was a lot. Um, so I thought about backing the entire cut file in some clear vellum just to tone down the pattern 
from behind the cut file, but all I have is eight and a half by 11. I have a lot of colored and patterned vellum, um, but like this is my last piece of plain vellum apparently, because I went through everything and this is all I could find. <laughs> so what I'm thinking is I will um, use the vellum for basically the mountain, like between the mountain and the trees, and then the sky and then the kind of sketchy outline of the circle will be empty. So you could still see the background like without the vellum through that. But I'm thinking I'll do this, that way it's a little bit toned down so that when I start layering and doing all this stuff behind the photo, it's not so busy, but you can still appreciate the background <laughs> through the other gaps. So that's pretty much what I've gotten so far. I have plenty of twine next to me. I thought all of these uh, screamed to the mood board. So if I incorporate a tag or something anywhere, I'll pick one of these to thread through them. Um, I'm definitely thinking any kind of like, wood veneer would be great. I could pull in a doily. I feel like a doily would also be very reminiscent of the dandelion. Um, I have some P13 leftovers, some wolf pack leftovers, and some 13 arts leftovers, which I think all would be great for embellishment if I needed it. Um, I think all of that is pretty on theme. So that's kind of what I'm starting with. <laughs> I don't really have a plan other than I want the cut file and like what I just told you. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the video on fast forward. But before we got started, I just wanted to show you kind of how I composed what I'm starting with <laughs> from my stash. So we're gonna get going and we'll see what happens, but this is kind of what I'm feeling right now. So see you guys in a minute. Okay, so here again is that inspiration photo. I love this one. <laughs> and I'm just gonna get started with layering some stuff behind the photo. So right away I'm taking out the stuff that I kind of figured after I added the cut file I wasn't going to use. So I went ahead and took out the cardboard and the burlap. I think if I did not have the cut file, those would have been really cool textural layers to include. But since I really want this cut file to kind of be the showstopper, I went ahead and decided I didn't need those other things. I had plenty of other textural elements I could pull in. Um, so I went ahead and put that stuff back. <laughs> and the first thing I wanted to do was back this cut file so I could go ahead and glue that down. I know it's going to be in the center of the page. So um, I wanna go ahead and just get it down so then I can start composing the rest of the page. And this is one of the reasons I love backing cut files in vellum. It's so easy to get the pieces you need because you can trace the cut file through the vellum with some pencil or something and then just cut it out and it's super easy. I'm just using my double sided tape to stick down the vellum on the back side of that cut file where it's not going to be seen. And then after that I'll glue the cut file down with my Tombow Mono Multi to the background. But I still have a lot of cool things I can uh, layer with even taking those couple pieces out. So I'm trying to think about that. Um, I do end up pulling in a 12 by 12 chipboard piece and I forget which collection it's from but it's a travel themed collection um, that I realized a couple of the pieces would be really good on this page so you'll see me pull that in as well uh, as the other embellishment that I showed you earlier but um, just getting the cut file down I think I'm almost done um, and then I'll get <laughs> I'll get it glued onto the background, but I'm loving this whole design and I think it couldn't have been more perfect for the mood board just because this big circular cut file, again, I have that white circular element that reminds me of the dandelion and I just think it all goes really, really well. And I love that. I love when you can take a mood board um, and it doesn't even have to be super literal. There's not an actual dandelion on here, but I feel like when you look at the mood board and then you see the layout, you can see where uh, that inspiration was incorporated in a non-literal way, which is really cool. Um, but honestly, I love using literal inspiration from <laughs> mood boards as well. So either way would have been cool. But here you can really see how that vellum helps tone down that section that is covered, but you still have plenty of this background to admire through the rest of it. So <laughs> I wasn't too worried about that. Uh, before I went to uh, layering around the photo, I decided to use my corner rounder just for a little bit of interest. I figured I have this round cut file. It might be interesting to include another round element. <laughs> um, and it kind of gives you a little extra of this mat that I'm going to add by rounding those corners. You can see a little bit more of that. So um, the first mat's going to be that scrap of wood grain with the white hearts. And then I'm going to do a mat with the chipboard, which I think is really cool. That scrap was already kind of a size I needed <laughs> in a scrap itself. So I'm glad I got to use more of that. 
Uh, but that gives me some dimension. It gives you some of that warmer brown, um, especially before you plonk it onto this white cut bio with some other lighter elements. I think it helps ground everything. So I'm just adding that as my second mat. And then you can see I'm tearing the edge. I've loved doing this <laughs> recently. Um, I think it just adds a really good, cool texture, but it really draws the attention to the fact that that is chipboard and it's not just another piece of paper. You get kind of the extra layers and that extra textural detail with that torn bottom. <laughs> um, so I really like that. I thought about adding more layers, but I honestly, I really like how it's looking with just these two. So now I'm going into embellishing. I really love these butterflies from the 13 Arts Collection, so I thought I might use those at first, um, but they're black and white, and um, even though we were allowed to pull black and white into this color scheme, I really liked the color scheme we were working with. Um, so once I pulled out some of these other pieces, I decided to go with some other things that were more in line with the color scheme. Um, I love all these wolf pack elements. I really want to pull in some wolf pack. <laughs> a lot of these sentiments, colors, and theme are right on. Um, but kind of when I wanted to incorporate them, it just looked, uh, it was just kind of distracting from the cut file. So <laughs> I kind of have to play a balancing game with what I'm going to include. But I already know I want to use this little arrow piece on the photo. It's a piece of acetate that says this place. And I thought that's really cool. You have this open area of the photo where the sky is. And I think it'd be really cool to have it like just on the photo. <laughs> um, and if I had some gold staples, I would have just stapled it right to the photo. I think that would have been really cool and to pull in some gold into that area. But I only have silver staples and I really wasn't wanting to mix metals. I really wanted all the metallics on this page to be the gold. Uh, just to tie into that wood grain background. <laughs> so that's kind of why I decided against stapling that. But I think that would have been really cool too. So, uh, but since I am pulling in the gold, I decided to go ahead and do the title pretty much where I told you guys I wanted to from the beginning in the upper left hand corner. So I just went through my stash and pulled in some gold alphas. Uh, and I'm just going to call it Stone Mountain. And I'm just going to have that title sitting along the arc of the wood grain in that corner. I think that looks really cool. I'm just tweaking the spacing a little bit um, so it's not looking too crowded and the words aren't like running into each other, but I think that looks nice. And again, I love how that pulls in some more gold. <laughs> um, so now it's just a game of uh, adding a couple more layers and embellishing. So after I added the gold up there, I thought about adding a gold doily, but that gold doily is a very, very bright yellow <laughs> metallic gold uh, so I chose to go against that and go with this more toned down uh, beigey brown which is more in the color scheme anyways and I think that looks really nice add some texture and some softness I really didn't want to go with a white since I have the white cut file so I think that brown doily is kind of unexpected and uh, still gives you that layery look um, and then from that chipboard piece I mentioned, I, I brought in, there's this little globe that is in the color scheme that says the world is yours. Uh, so I also thought that was perfect. <laughs> um, but I definitely did want to add in a tag. So I'm just going back to this heart wood grain uh, piece and trimming my own tag. I'm just going to glue down a white hole reinforcer and thread that with some golden white twine. Again, just to pull more gold in. <laughs> I don't want the gold to be super in your face, but I want it incorporated in all of these areas in a subtle way, just so it all ties back. Um, I haven't been using metallics a lot recently, so on this page where I really have an excuse to use gold, uh, I'm going for it. <laughs> um, but I'm liking how this is looking. I wanted something to connect that doily up there to the globe that's in the bottom right of the photo so I think this tag uh, does a really good job of that um, and then now I think I'm going to go ahead and glue down this place so since I chose to not staple it I just decided to uh, back the entire thing in some double stick tape acetate and vellum is notorious for being tricky because you can see adhesive behind it so if I were just to do a little bit of adhesive you would be able to see where the adhesive was behind that piece but since I backed 100% of it in the adhesive, <laughs> you can't tell, which is nice. So stuck that down to the photo. I really like that. Um, I'm kind of feeling like I need some more gold down here by the photo to balance the title better. So I'm just trying to figure out embellishment-wise what I want to do. 
but I'm still missing some more gold down there. <laughs> I go a little embellishment happy here for a moment. I'm really determined to use some of these wolf pack puppy stickers. Um, and so I just stick all the bears on the layout, like five of them. <laughs> and uh, then I go in with these little poxy hearts from Lisa. And I think that's really cute, but there's just too much in too many places. So I have to pull back a little bit. I end up taking off the stuff that's by the title and uh, I leave the two little bears on the tag. And then uh, I decide to have one to the bottom left to create a little cluster there instead. Um, but yeah, the, there are too many little bears everywhere. <laughs> so um, I had to edit a little bit, but I did go and use these little um, puffy circles uh, to add some gold down by the globe. Um, and I went ahead and glued down the photo cluster too because I like where that's sitting. <laughs> but I'm still feeling like there's a lack of something to the left of the photo. Um, so I decided to add a little cluster there. So I have this little scrap of this map print from, map print from um, the Wolfpack collection. I had already used a border punch on it uh, for a previous page and it was just a leftover. So I decided just to add it to either side of the photo to create this little horizontal anchor point and then to create a, another cluster to the left of the photo to help balance everything. So uh, I got another chipboard piece off of that chipboard pack that the globe was on. And I think that really helps balance the gold from the title. And then once that was there, I was like, okay, I need a bear down here and I need to edit the <laughs> title because there's too much going on up there. So I take away the bears up there by the title, add the little standing bear down here to that little arrow piece. And then <laughs> instead of using all of the epoxy hearts um, that were really pretty minty aqua, I decided to go with more of these puffy circular pieces just because you could see them better and the gold really helped uh, balance the title. So <laughs> instead I decided to add more gold down here by this bear. I think that helps a lot with balancing and I have some more gold down there on either side of the photo. I think that helps balance the title. I think all of this is good. <laughs> um, I did swap the aqua heart between those bears for one of these gold foiled hearts from the One Canoe 2 hashtag sticker book and I think that makes it look a little bit better too. <laughs> uh, so this, I had to just step back for a second <laughs> and um, redesign a little bit but this looks better to me i still want something up there by the title um, but instead of it being like a bear or something i decided to go in with a couple of the bluey green colors from uh, these little puffy puffy circular pieces so um, i didn't really need the gold like i did at the bottom of the page because i have the gold of the title but i decided to use the bluey green ones to tie in with the other colored elements of the page so now it's balanced i feel like this looks a lot better to me <laughs> um, and i'm trying to decide if i need to do anything else but i actually really like how that's looking i think it does the mood board justice um, and so here are the close-ups. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.